Does the devil have any legal right to trespass on your property? Find out next on 41 Strong. Hey, everybody. Welcome to 41 Strong Podcast. Chuck Tate back with you. 41 Strong is a podcast that delivers encouraging scriptures and stories to help people like you. Hold on and stand strong. For more information about 41 Strong, go to my website, chuckytate.com. And if you wonder what's the deal with the number 41, go to 41willcome.com. That's 41willcome.com. Well, today is episode 149, and we're going to continue our talk on spiritual warfare. Last week, our theme was, we are at war, and today's theme is no trespassing. All right, I want to go straight to Scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. This is a familiar passage. Any pastor or teacher that teaches or preaches or discusses spiritual warfare goes right to this passage. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. Verse 10 says, finally be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. How do you do that? Well, by putting on the armor of God. We're going to expose some of his strategies and some of his tactics today and and discuss whether or not he has the right to trespass on God's property. But I want to read verse 12. It says, we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of this unseen world. So we know that there is a world that we cannot see with our natural eyes. We're fighting against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world. All right, I don't know if you've ever read This Present Darkness by Frank Peretti, but I think that paints a pretty good picture of what the scriptures are talking about when they mention unseen world, mighty powers in this dark world. And it goes on to say, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. So we know there is a spiritual battle that does take place in the heavenly between angels and demons, between angelic hosts and angels who were kicked out of heaven. Now, we spent some time last week on the podcast talking about how the devil and a third of the angels were kicked out of heaven, where they're at now. The Word of God says that the devil, he roams this earth. That's why it says here, we're fighting against evil spirits in not only heavenly places, but in this dark world. Because the devil who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he roams around this earth looking for people like you and I to devour. And when you read the Gospels, you will find out that the Bible takes demons seriously. And we should too. In fact, there are 70 references to demons in the Gospels alone. Isaiah prophesied in chapter 61, verse 1, that Jesus would show up to do this, all right? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, all right? Isaiah penned those words, Hundreds of years later, Jesus showed up, and before he launched his ministry, the devil attacked him and tried to tempt him and tried to derail him from his destiny before he could even begin. For 40 days, Jesus fasted and prayed. 41 came, right? 41 will come. He didn't quit. He didn't give in to the enemy. He spoke the word. Angels showed up. The devil fled, and Jesus launched his ministry. What did he come to do? Well, He repeated the words of Isaiah, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. This prophecy was fulfilled hundreds of years later when Jesus said the following words. The Spirit of the Lord 
is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, those who are downtrodden, those who are despondent, those that have been stepped on. Jesus came for us. And the Word of God says that when you confess Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord is saved. That word saved in the Greek is a word sozo. And that word sozo is translated as not only saved, but healed, delivered, and set free. Jesus came so we could walk in freedom. That means he paid too big of a price for us to enslave ourselves to sin. He paid too big of a price for us to live bound by a spirit of fear. And I know some of you watching and listening today, right now, you're in a season where you are paralyzed by fear. You're weighed down by anxiety. And I want you to know that Jesus came to set you free. And whoever he sets free is free indeed. So today, we're going to expose the enemy for who he is. He's a liar. And here's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. We are not unaware of his schemes, right? We know his strategy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to deceive us with lies that sound like true. This is why you can't look at life through a cultural lens. You need to look at life through a biblical lens. And if you don't know what to believe, our culture will tell you what to believe. And if you don't know the word, it's so easy to be deceived by the enemy with lies that sound like truth. And this is exactly what Satan did in the Garden of Eden to Adam and Eve. He twisted the words of God. And that's what's taking place today. If you don't believe me, just get on Twitter. All right? <laughs> now, I want to look at a few stories in the Gospels where Jesus confronted demonic spirits, all right? Because one of the enemy's strategies is to trespass. He wants to oppress people. He wants to deceive people. He wants to possess people. Now, having said that, we know, and I'm going to repeat this in just a moment, that a Christian cannot be possessed of the enemy. I'll explain why in just a second. But first, Mark chapter 9, verse 17. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son to you so you could heal him. He is possessed. He's possessed by an evil spirit, and that evil spirit won't let him talk. Let me read this from the message. A man out of the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought my mute son made speechless by a demon. Why couldn't this young man speak? Because a demon had bound his mouth. So this boy's illness was attached to a demonic spirit. Now, I'm not saying that every sickness and disease is attached to a demonic spirit. We live in a fallen world. There's sickness, there's disease. Some of it's the devil, some of it's not. All right, we get that. Um, I'm not saying that I'm not blaming everything on the devil. We have to battle our flesh. We live in a messed up world, and there are things that we can do that can bring on sickness and disease, right? We know there are consequences for our actions. We reap what we sow. So don't misunderstand me today. However, all right, we would be um, making a, a huge error if we didn't say there can be an association, we look at the Gospels, and there is right here, this young man couldn't talk. He was a mute because of a demonic spirit. In fact, here's what this young man's father said to Jesus. Whenever the demon seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, he grinds his teeth, and he goes stiff as a board. I told your disciples, hoping they could deliver him, but they couldn't. All right? Jesus in James chapter 4, verse 7 says, resist the enemy and he will flee. Jesus empowered his disciples to cast out demons, and Jesus has empowered us to cast out demons. A lot of people fell to 
look at the second part of Matthew or Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. The Great Commission, the first part says, go into all the world and make disciples. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. But it also says to lay hands on the sick and to cast out demons. Therefore, we know we've been empowered to carry out the mission of Jesus. And that includes praying that people receive healing and praying that people will receive deliverance. That's right here in his word. But even Jesus said, sometimes somebody can't be delivered unless there is prayer and fasting. All right. We can pray to God. We can resist the enemy, but sometimes we need to fast. We need to make a sacrifice. We need to press in to God. That's what Jesus was communicating to this man, and he communicated it to his disciples. Now, when we look at this passage, Mark chapter 9, verse 17, the word is possessed. Now, this word translated possessed by the King James Version is the Greek word, daemon is omai. And many Greek authorities say that this should be translated demonized or to have demons. There's a lot of confusion that's resulted from the use of the word possessed because possessed suggests total ownership. So we know a Christian cannot be possessed, all right? Why? Because we can't be owned by demons because we belong to Christ. In fact, The word says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read that in 1 Corinthians in just a few moments. All right, our body is the house of God. If you've given your life to Christ and you're saved, set free, delivered, and healed, then God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is inside of you. Therefore, a demonic spirit cannot take total ownership of you. He can trespass. He can can, um, attack you. All right, but he cannot have complete ownership. All right, and when it comes to trespassing, he only has he has no legal right unless we give it to him. And we'll unpack that here in a moment. But just don't misunderstand me. A Christian can be attacked, a Christian can be oppressed, but a Christian cannot be possessed. All right. Luke chapter four is another example. Luke chapter four, verse 33. Once Jesus was in the synagogue. All right. um, The new life version says that he was in the place of worship. And the message translation says that while he was in this meeting place, a synagogue, a house of worship, that he was interrupted by a man who was deeply disturbed, who was yelling out, this man had a demon. All right. He was possessed by a demon, an evil spirit, and he cried out to Jesus, go away. Why are you interfering with this Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. All right, so the demon inside of this man recognized who Jesus was. Now let's fast forward to after Jesus went to the cross, came out of the grave, the disciples received the Holy Spirit, they got up and preached the first message, the church was launched, they began to meet regularly, and the church multiplied and began to meet every single day, all right? Here's what happened. There were some people that didn't have a genuine relationship with God through Jesus, and they were trying to use the name of Jesus usely when it came to casting out demons. And there's a story in the New Testament where a demon says, Peter I know, Paul I know, but who the heck are you, right? So we need to understand the power that we have. We need to get into the Word and equip ourselves and know what it says so we can exercise that authority. In this story, this demon knew who Jesus was. And Jesus simply said, be quiet. And he ordered the demon to come out of the man. He said, come out of the man. And at that, the demon threw the man to the floor as the crowd watched. Then it came out of him without hurting him further. So the demon had been hurting him. Again, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, and he will do everything he can to invade you. He will do everything he can to disrupt you. He will do everything he can to distract you, to keep you from church, to keep you from the Word of God, to stop you from praying. He will try to do everything he can to get you to buy into lies that sound like truth. If you don't want to be deceived, Everything comes back to the Word, which is why we're going through the Word today. Mark chapter 5, I'm going to read one last story. Mark chapter 5, it says this, They arrived on the other side of the sea in the country of the Gerasenes. 
as Jesus got out of the boat, a madman from the cemetery came up to him. All right, The New Living Translation says that this madman came from the tombs to meet Jesus. Notice how Jesus is always being interrupted by demons, right? He's in worship, bam, there's a distraction. The devil's trying to use somebody to disrupt what Jesus was doing. And here, Jesus can't even get a break. He's in a boat, relaxing. He's cr- coming to the other side. He gets out of the boat, and immediately, this madman comes up to him. And the scripture says that this man, he lived among the tombs and graves. No one could restrain him. He couldn't be chained. He couldn't be tied down. He had been tied up many times with chains and ropes, but he broke the chains. He snapped the ropes. No one was strong enough to tame him. Night and day, he roamed through the graves and the hills, screaming out and slashing himself with sharp stones. Man, that's crazy, right? And this man, he wasn't crazy, but he was controlled by a demon. And not just one, but many. Jesus said to the demon, what's your name? And he answered, legion, for we, not I, but we are are many. And when Jesus cast the demons out of the man, they went into a herd of about 2,000 pigs, and those pigs went off a cliff and killed themselves and were drowned in the sea. That is the work of the enemy. There is a very real thing called spiritual warfare. There is a battle that goes on in the heavenlies. There's a battle that goes on in an unseen world that we can't see with our natural eyes. We know that there are battles going on every day all around us in this dark world. That's what Ephesians 6 says. So one of the strategies of the enemy is to send people who are under his influence to attack you. This is why you have to remember that people aren't the enemy, but they're influenced by the enemy. They're used by the enemy. All right, so don't be bitter. We have to forgive. If we are bitter, we're turned over to the tormentors. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to get there. I'm going to, I'm going to give you some ways in which the enemy can trespass in just a moment. All right, um, Mark Driscoll tweeted this just a couple of days ago. Some people are evil and demonic, and what he means by that is they're influenced by, by demons, all right, which has caused them to act out evil. All right, to be demonic. Some people are evil and demonic. They're not beyond help, but they're beyond your help. And they need God's help. What's this mean? There are some relationships in your life that could be toxic that you might need to cut off. The word says in 1 Corinthians um, that bad company corrupts good morals. All right, so if you are hanging out with people that are dragging you down, if you're in a toxic relationship that is destroying you, you're going to have to cut that off. Pray for them, love them, but they need help that you can't offer. All right, so let's talk about trespassing for a moment. I want to read this scripture. We only have about a minute left, but 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Do you not know that your body is a house of God where the Holy Spirit lives? God gave you his Holy Spirit, and now you belong to God. You don't belong to yourself, so you don't need to go find yourself. You need to find Jesus and find out what he wants you to do. Submit to him. He will make every crooked path straight. He will lead you and guide you, all right? So you don't need to go post, I need to find myself. You don't need to find yourself, all right? You belong to God. God bought you with a great price, so honor God with your body, why? Because you belong to him. In other words, don't let the enemy trespass. Here's the definition of trespass. An unlawful act causing injury to the person, property, or rights of another committed with force or violence, actual or implied. That's the definition of trespass. The definition of trespasser, one who unlawfully and stealthily encroaches upon the territory of another. So let me close with this. The devil has no legal right to trespass unless you let him. Don't let him. All right? There are a number of things that you can do that will allow the enemy to trespass. And I'm out of time today. So on our podcast next week, we're going to discuss them in detail. One of those, I'll leave you with this, is bitterness. Because the word says, if you don't forgive and you harbor bitterness in your heart, that you will be turned over to the tormentors. Who are the tormentors? Demons. All right? So it's so important to forgive. And let me just say this, forgiveness does not mean you're okay with the horrific things that have been done to you. 
Forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you so you can be free and Jesus died to set you free. So somebody shout, no trespassing. All right, we'll continue it next week. I'm out of time. I love you. I'll be praying for you. For more information, again, go to my website, chuckytate.com. For more information, um, you can also go to 41willcome.com. And if you don't have the book yet, you can get it at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. For our producer, Mike Sable, I'm Chuck Tate, and I can't wait to see you next week on 41 Strong. PeoriaLife.com.